Our first national news story is actually coming from a YouTube clip from a police video on their patrol car. A lawsuit has emerged from an incident where the police stop a man uh, allowing a dog to bite him and planted drugs on him, it appears. You be the judge and check for yourself. Mr. Farrell gets out of the car, obviously hands raised. Ben Winters and attorney Blair Durham are representing Farrell. They say police use excessive force in June of last year when they arrested the 28-year-old. In the video, a police canine being held by Officer Jeff Johnson bites what appears to be a compliant Carlos Farrell. Your dog just ate my leg off. One of the officers that has control of the dog allows the dog to, to attack Mr. Farrell even after he's on the ground. The attorneys also accuse Cookville police officer Chris Melton of planting drugs on their client. Now the cops leave. Here's the hand signal. Officer Melton searches Farrell's pockets at least a half dozen times. Then, Durham says, another officer appears to give a signal with his hand. Melton reaches into his own right pocket, looks into the camera, and, Durham says, that's when Melton puts a bag of marijuana into Farrell's pocket. In another uh, story in our national news, coming out of the Boise Guardian out of Idaho, uh, we have a man who was also uh, allegedly, at um, this point, tortured by police uh, with a taser. Uh, he was tortured uh, in, uh, on, or around his bum, the, uh, the paper says, which is a nice way of saying that they probably sodomized the man with a taser. And uh, he has basically gone against them. He's filed a lawsuit, and he was paid um, approximately $150,000 uh, by the city. The uh, officer still hasn't had any um, charges brought up against him. Of course not. And then the taxpayers pay for it. Another story uh, that's quite frightening about the increasingly emerging police state in our country uh, is about a girl's arrest for doodling, which raised concerns about legal tolerance. This is from CNN. A 12 year old student in New York was arrested for doodling that she loves her friends on her desk. Critics have decried the use of police force in schools for nonviolent offenses. Uh, a 13 year old has previously been arrested for writing OK on the desk. New York City schools have 5,000 employees for the New York Police Department school security offices, which is more than the DC police force total. Uh, a nonprofit based in California, the Strategy Center, focuses on zero tolerance policies and reports that 12,000 tickets alone were issued in LA last year for tardy insurance. Michael Seguero recalls actually being arrested himself in 2005 when, as a principal at Bronx Guild School, he tried to stop an officer for handcuffing one of his students. He says, there is zero intelligence when you start applying zero tolerance across the board. Stupid and ridiculous things start happening. On the same level of ideas in schools and how the police state's being enacted on our children, uh, there's been a lawsuit out of a Philadelphia school district. Uh, this is coming from MSNBC and was also featured on the Raw Story. And uh, students in a Philadelphia area school district have launched a lawsuit accusing their schools of spying on them at home through webcams which were installed on uh, computers the district gave them. So this is a kind of a rich uh, neighborhood, apparently, with a rich school district, and they apparently had enough money to give all of the kids laptops, which had the webcams already put onto the screen. And a uh, young man was apparently brought into the principal's office, told that they had evidence of him doing uh, inappropriate activity because he was doing it at his house in his bedroom. And uh, this has brought out a whole lawsuit. The parents are really upset, uh, and rightly so, that the school was spying on uh, family activities or their children's activities that were going on in their own privacy uh, away from school. Uh, totally criminal what these administrations uh, were involved in over at this school. Well, hopefully the courts conclude that uh, it was completely criminal and hold them accountable for what they did and set a precedent so this kind of thing couldn't happen. In the meantime, this story comes from CNET News under Politics and Law section. It's Fed's push for tracking cell phones. Uh, police tap cell locations thousands of times a year, actually, uh, quite to our distaste. The Obama administration has argued that warrantless tracking is permitted because Americans enjoy, quote, no reasonable expectation of privacy, end quote, in their, at least their cell phone's whereabouts. 
The U.S. Department of Justice lawyers say that a customer's Fourth Amendment rights are not violated when the phone company reveals to the government its own records. In a recent court ruling, U.S. Magistrate Judge Lisa Lenahan in Pennsylvania denied the Justice Department's attempt to obtain stored information uh, without a search warrant. The DOJ is appealing this ruling, which protected our privacy, and they say in their claim that the opinion contains relies upon numerous errors and should be overruled. Another previous case has also ruled that a suspect did not have the legitimate expectation of privacy in his cell phone, and if he intended to keep the cell phone's location private, that he would have turned it off or taken the battery out. Our next article comes from Wired.com, and it's about the Pentagon Black Budget. Uh, many people have been speaking about this lately, uh, ever since it came out that we had a $708 billion um, uh, budget, Defense Department budget, which was released by the Obama administration, the largest uh, Defense Department budget that's ever been released in history, by the way. Change. And there's uh, $56 billion of that, which is uh, basically classified programs, so-called, which has always been known as the Pentagon Black Budget. Now, this is a budget that even Congress isn't allowed to see. They don't know what's on it. They just know them by their, uh, you know, code names, Chalk Eagle or Link Plumeria, all these different operations that are going on. No one even knows what they're doing except the people that are probably involved. And, um, yeah, it just shows how the Obama administration is actually ramping up war even more than the Bush administration was. I mean, things are worse in a, in a war sense under Obama now than they were a year ago under Bush, which is, is really crazy when you think about it. It's the opposite of what they said was going to happen. But it just proves how much of liars these people are. And right along those lines, this next story comes from Veterans Today featured uh, this uh, Senate burglary, CIA domestic black op team arrested. Four suspects were arrested during a break-in of Senator Mary Landrieu's New Orleans Federal Building Office. Uh, they were all CIA and possible Israeli trained agents. Uh, one of them, Stan Dye, was arrested blocks away with a receiver for bugs. Uh, Dye is an operations officer for the Department of Defense's Irregular Warfare Program. Uh, Landrieu is an investigating massive money laundering, financial crimes, and terrorist funding by countries such as Israel, Jordan, Turkey, and India, which Dye actually got training from at an Israel-based uh, foundation for the defense of democracies. The article says, if you wanted a plane to crash, an enemy to get sick and die, or a building to blow up, die would be the man to know how to make it happen. Die teaches at the summer school for the Intelligence Community Center for Academic Excellence at Georgetown University, actually. Uh, so this is a pretty crazy story about CIA operations illegally being conducted on our own soil. And, of course, the CIA's mission statement says they're only supposed to be operable um, outside of the U.S. They're supposed to exactly. be a foreign intelligence service, exactly, not a domestic intelligence service. Well, in other news, um, from PrisonPlanet.com, uh, radio talk show host Alex Jones's Google Merchant account has been completely disabled after the search engine giant sent an email claiming the products uh, listed uh, promoted violence and that they advocated against a, quote, protected group, which I guess is the government. I guess you're not allowed to advocate against the government. Which is counterintuitive to the entire foundation of this country, which knew that government is a focal point for corruption, and it could be your enemy, and it must be kept in check by the people to which it owes its power. And this is the it's also directly against what Google claims they were all about in the beginning, which was freedom and freedom of speech. Uh, they really came off of that that way when they first initiated yeah. that corporation. And we'll get more into that, actually, on our uh, next show on... Uh, open sources and, uh, and censorship. censorship. The next story is also troubling with the government's uh, criticizing your ability to criticize it. Uh, in South Carolina, this is coming from the Raw Story website, uh, no joke, South Carolina now requires subversives to register. A $5 registration fee for persons planning to overthrow the government is now required there. And they define a subversive organization as every corporation, society, association, camp, group, bund, political party, assembly, body, or organization composed of two or more persons which directly or indirectly advocates, advises, teaches, or practices the duty, necessity, 
or propriety of controlling, conducting, seizing, or overthrowing the government of the United States or of that state, South Carolina. So that's um, a pretty wide-based uh, rule there. They're saying if you want to conduct or control any way of the government, hey, even which political is what parties. you're supposed to do, that's what citizens are supposed to do, is keep the government in control. And uh, they're basically telling you that you are a, a terrorist and a subversive if so you do it. So the opposite of the foundation. Which of didn't this we just uh, do a show to discussing criminal. or an article discussing in our last show about Lu Jiabois who was put in under subversion charges in mm -hmm. communist China? Yep. So it sounds a lot similar to that. Our next article comes from CQ Politics. It's entitled "New Extension Likely for Key Patriot Act Provisions," and uh, they essentially in the new uh, job bill that's come out. They want to have a uh, extension till December 31st of a few of the provisions in the Patriot Act, which have expired, or they expired last year. And um, I, they will most likely get these passed since the Patriot Act has been passed continually uh, by both members of both parties. Uh, both sides of the aisle have continually passed it over and over again and continue to extend the provisions. And now this time they're just tucking it into a bill instead of passing it on its own, which is even more uh, ridiculous. They're disguising and, it in and that sense. Really. And I think uh, Q Senator Ron Paul, we previously covered an article where he said that it's grossly immoral that they're tying the two together. And our next story is from WBT News Talk uh, 1110, and it's civil fraud charges filed against B of A Ken Lewis. Uh, New York City's Gen... Or New York State's Attorney General Andrew Cuomo has filed civil fraud charges against Bank of America and former CEO Ken Lewis over a 2009 merger with Merrill Lynch. Cuomo says that Bank of America, through its top management, engaged in a concerted effort to deceive shareholders and American taxpayers at large. He described the B of A and Merrill merger as a prime example of what led to the near collapse of our financial system. B of A agreed to pay $150 million still to be approved after a $33 million settlement was declined. The judge, uh, Judge Rakoff, said that the first deal was a breach of justice and morality, done at the expense not only of the shareholders, but also of the truth. Out of CNN, um, ex-New York Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick was sentenced to 48 months in prison. Uh, he will be spending uh, his next four years there. And it doesn't look like he'll be getting out any time early. Um, Carrick also pleaded guilty in November to tax fraud and six other felonies. Um, he essentially was plead pled guilty to charges of lying to the Bush administration uh, amongst the tax fraud and all of his other charges. He has other problems going on with uh, companies that were paying him off money to do things while he was the New York uh, police commissioner. This guy is kind of the epitome of New York corruption and fraud. And uh, it's good that at least somebody's going down for this. The only problem, of course, is he's a low drop in the bucket. Um, mm -hmm. They always will give out, you know, these little kind of minion people to go get in trouble and make them spend time in jail. But uh, it's just the tip of the we're not seeing Bernanke or Geithner or any of the top real criminals yeah. uh, being brought in. Or which even is what the, needs to be done. the banking elite across the globe, let alone, um, yeah, the ones that are in charge of our systems here. The next story is uh, another kind of criminal conspiracy against taxpayers uh, in the state of Washington. This is from MicrosoftTaxDodge.com, uh, how Microsoft evades $1 billion in Washington state taxes. With a $2.8 billion deficit, Washington State House has a bill granting a royalty tax change which would give a $100 million tax cut to po and possible amnesty for $1.27 billion of past tax evasion to Microsoft. HB or House Bill 3176, sponsored by Republican uh, Representative Ross Hunter, is actually a former Microsoft general manager. So that shows the blatant cronyism, and that's absolutely unacceptable. Um, it's, it's, it's a fascist action, and it should be considered treason. Out of MSNBC, changing gears a little bit to discuss um, more on the economy, but how it's really affecting um, you know lower class and, and even middle class people. There's been a rising tide of suburban uh, homelessness across the U.S. with um, all kinds of shelters and other places being basically inundated and overrun, not being able to uh, cope with all these different people. All the shelters have been saying that they've been seeing um, you know new families and especially young men who can't um, find work have lost their jobs who are out on the streets for their first time. They're really seeing a lot of first-time people who have been at a shelter uh, because of this depression which was created by these criminal banksters and, and the rest of them. 